Hey guys, welcome back to Mobile Dwellings where we build, live in, and tour homes that you can take with you on the road. Right now we are building out this sweet Bluebird Transit bus for our friends Katie and Sam, and it's going really well and looking absolutely gorgeous in here. In this video, we're going to be doing all of the supply side plumbing. So everything from the tanks, fixtures, to the water heater, it's getting plumbed in today. To do that, we're gonna be using some PEX pipes, some fittings, just a couple tools. Let's get building. We have a ton of shark bite fittings. These are extremely expensive. You might wanna choose crimp on connectors instead. We've got some PEX pipe. We've got Got some braided vinyl pipe channel locks. These are PVC cutters. There's other tools to cut pecs with, but these will do. Pipe joint compound. We also have a 12 volt water pump, a strainer, an accumulator tank, a really nice, surprisingly inexpensive faucet that I've installed before, and also a number of items that haven't arrived in the mail yet. So everything you see here that I'm able to, I have linked below. As long as it is a good price, you will see an Amazon link for it. If not, you can find it at your local distributor. So when I do projects like this, I really like to work from back to front. I've got a very disorganized brain and it helps me to have a direction to head in instead of jumping back and forth and being all scattered. So the first thing I'm gonna do is install this faucet. We've got our hoses, we've got the faucet, we got the connector. It's a pretty easy install, so you guys can just watch me do it. So that was it. This is by far the easiest faucet I've ever installed and I'm really happy with it. It's only 60 bucks. Slight amendment to the instructions. It says that it wants you to put the hoses in after, but it would be much easier to put the hoses in first. So practically a freebie install right there. So next up we are installing our first valves and our first push to connect fittings. Those are half inch PEX pipes that we installed previously. These are half inch shark bite sink valves. They do quarter turn to turn off and on and they're expensive, but they're really easy to install. So we are gonna take off these nuts right here. We do not need them. They're gonna be replaced by the nuts on the end of those hoses over there. If you're wondering about this copper furrow that comes with the valve, you don't need this. This is for a compression fitting. So these lines that I just installed, you need to get them beyond hand tight. So you need to have channel locks or a wrench, but you don't wanna crank those on too hard. You might break that rubber seal that's in there. And if you get a little bit of spray out of there, you can always tighten them just a little bit more and it should solve the problem. So don't go too crazy on those things. Hey, this feels pretty nice quality. Yeah, for 60 bucks. For oh 60 gosh. bucks on Amazon. All right, Nova, it's time to wash your hands. Go ahead and turn on the water. How exciting is that? It's the first time it took me five minutes to install something and everybody's <laughs> pumped about it. So there you go, kitchen sink is plumbed. So the next thing I want to work on is the water heater. The first thing I have to do is install this plug into the side of the water heater. For vertical installation, we're going to put this pressure relief valve on top of the unit and this plug on the side of the unit. I also recommend, of course, that you don't just follow what I do, but read your supplier instructions for each of these items as well. They might tell you about some things that I just took for granted. Just got really dark, but there's the plug that I just installed on the side of this with some joint compound. You can use Teflon tape too, but is what I like to use. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install this pressure relief valve on top of the unit. Oh God, I hope this thing isn't too tall. So what I just installed is a pressure relief valve. As water heats up, it expands. And so if the water has nowhere to go in the tank, they don't want the tank to like erupt or anything. So the pressure is relieved through the pressure relief valve. That means that if this water does that in this tank, it will spit out. For that reason, usually in residential applications, that thing is plumbed in with a drain that goes to some sort of a pan and ideally even outside. We are not doing that because I found in my build that it wasn't necessary. It's never leaked through the pressure relief valve. However, it might for you. And we don't just leave it on max all the time. We usually set it to ideal for 20 minutes, take a shower, use it, and then turn it off. So it's gonna be a use-based scenario, but just know that that's not the official finished install. So next up we are going to be doing those threaded connections on top of the tank. For that we have three quarter inch threaded female to half inch push connect fittings.
don't go crazy, but make sure they're tight. If you start threading a fitting like that on and it doesn't feel right and it doesn't make three or four easy turns, you're probably cross-threading it. Don't rush it, just undo it, put it back on. So because I'm about to be mounting this to the wall, and plumbing it into place, which will mean that we won't be able to take it out in the future. I'm going to wire this in now. And to do that, I'm going to use crimp connectors. We've got a 12 gauge supply wire. So there's a 12 gauge connector. 16, 14 and 16 gauge fits into it, which is what the wires and the water heater is. So here's my connections and now I've just got to shove them into that hole and secure this back on. So it was a bit of a struggle to get the water heater on the bracket in this ridiculously tight space. I could have taken all this apart and had an easier time since I got it done. Now I don't have to put it all together and we can keep moving. So to install this water heater, we need to have hot and cold lines running off those push fittings that we put in. We need a valve on the cold line. This will allow you to stop all water from flowing to the water heater. That way you can remove it if you need to work on it or take it out of the system. We don't really need a valve on the hot side of the water heater because we can just turn off the water to the water heater, run the tap for a couple minutes or a couple seconds, and we will have removed the water from those lines. So we only need a valve on the cold side of the water heater. All right, so this looks a little bit janky. We basically wanted to use as few elbows as possible because they cost like $8 each, but we've basically pulled this off. Off of here is going to be the shower mixing valve, which we don't know what that's gonna look like yet. So that's gonna stay right there. And then from this direction, we need to go down and across to go over to the water pump. Hi, my name is River and I love fabulous outfits and dancing, not having any hair to maintain, and I love my family. Oh, <laughs> this sweet River. So I added this elbow right here, and now we've got our line going down. I've made a hole down there to go out, and now basically we can start plumbing underneath the engine bay. So we're gonna bring that over here and start installing the pump and the humidor tank over there. So last night, Sam and I came up with pretty much the plan for how this is gonna go. Conveniently, he drew it out for me. He did a great job. You can have a look at this, save it for later if you want to, but this is essentially what we're going to be building. I'm not going to explain this to you. It's going to change as I install it, but once we put it on the wall, I'll tell you all about why we made these decisions and how this system is going to work. vegan mozzarella cheese and refried beans with avocado and tomato and vegan sour cream and roasted potatoes. Thanks so much, babe. You're welcome. You're keeping this build alive? Yeah. Yummy, yummy. I didn't film it, but I changed up the orientation here a little bit. From here, I'm gonna keep plumbing. When it's all done, I'm gonna explain it to you. It's gonna make sense.
guys, it's a new day, it's a windy one, and it's finally a cool one. Let's do something on the bus. This is the glorious mess I've been creating over the last couple of days. And right here is our RV inlet. And the next thing we're gonna do is put this on the side of the bus so that we can get fresh water into our bus. Now this right here doesn't have a threaded city hose inlet. And so we are going to be cutting one into it. And the reason that I chose this one, it's got a low profile, it's got a lock. A lot of the fill inlets that come with the threaded connection are plastic garbage junk. This would have been the weakest point in our system and it would also be embedded on the wall. So the location that's gonna leak is straight down the wall. So we're going to be putting our own brass connection. I'm gonna drill it through that flat spot right there. So I was looking back at some photos of this bus. Basically the top eight inches has stuff that we can't really drill through. So we wanna go lower than that, which is pretty convenient because our fill ended up being pretty low as well. Looks like I've got close to 11 inches from the top. So this right here basically needs to go like this on the outside. So I made a slight adjustment here. I added in this little thing because sort of cut this a little bit too low, but it is actually the perfect height for this to pop out. So I'm happy with this. All right, so let's start making some connections to this uh, fill port. The next thing we have to do is we have to put this brass fitting through this right here. And this is an exactly one inch. So you could use a one inch drill bit, you could use a one inch hole saw. I happen to have one of these, I think they're called Forstner bits, Fostner bits, for making a nice clean. Okay, that really didn't go well. Do not use this bit. It just tears the heck out of plastic. That wasn't great. Time to give this a test. This is obviously a hose. On this hose, we have basically just a cheap pressure regulator because we don't want this hose to send crazy amounts of pressure into the bus, it's not necessary. What's it rated at? It should end up being like 40 PSI at most. Which is like half of what residential water pressure is. I think it's 80. Will you yell at me if there's a leak? Yeah. Okay. All right, water is on. Let's go see how we're doing. Did we do this correctly? So we thought it was gonna come like this, but this might be for water flowing this way. Oh shit. That side might be shut off right now. Yep, here we go. Oh, these, these valves are off. Oh, okay. Don't worry, don't worry, Sam, don't worry. The valve's off. Here we go. Uh. Maybe it's just to open this up all the way. Oh, okay, all right, okay. open it all the way. Woo! That's a, that's a lot of pressure. Oh man, that could totally rinse off a wetsuit. Yeah. Cancel the whole shower. That does it. Yeah, right? <laughs> okay, so we made a minor mistake. This L port valve, which I'm gonna explain to you later, is actually essentially upside down for the way that we've set it up. This is what it looks like before we fix it. With the handle on the top. But now you see that this has been flipped upside down. Now the water can roll through here and go that way, or through here. All right, tank is filling. Because of the nature of the transit bus and the low windows and the fact that we have this tank upright, we were not able to use the gravity fill because we can't use gravity to fill it. This would have to be like up here. We completely next the gravity fill. This is a normal vent and it's acting as a vent, letting out air as this fills with water. And now this is actually a vent too, a really big vent, which is hopefully going to help this flow in more easily. This might be completely unnecessary. We have to make this not flow out water anyway. So we've added this on. So that's a vent, that's a vent, and this is the fill. So as you can see, we got city water coming to this L port, and at the moment it is sending water this way to fill the tank. We got the uh, water all hooked up, and right now the tank is filling, but I can turn it to city pressure water. Okay, Noah, do you wanna climb up there and turn it on? Yeah. What? Wow! It's amazing! Woo! It's so 
Oh, wet. Oh, this tank is filling with water. I'm gonna wire up this pump real quick so we can test that out too. waiting on a little bit more water coming into this tank. I'm basically waiting to see what that gravity vent is gonna do once the water gets to the top of the tank. And if pulling it up will stop the water from coming out. I'm hoping that it does. The concern about this tank and what it does when it's on its side, as you can see, it bulges out majorly. According to their instructions, it's okay to have it on its side, but for me, this just looks alarming. Look at that. It used to be over there. So we are just about to be full. Pretty soon we're gonna see water fill into here and probably fill into here and probably go out of the gravity. So here it comes. We are super full. Water is still not coming out of the fill. So this is a great success, guys. This hose is raised just a little bit higher than the tank. As you can see, the water is in the middle of this and it's not leaking. It's not sending water out, just air. So let's just fill a little bit more. Let's get this completely full so we know what happens. Okay, finally, see that? And now we have water coming out of the fill. So that's perfect. This will be raised up a little bit like that. This is my new pet, Goldie. See, I'm having a nap. So now we've got the water coming from the tank to the pump and we're flowing. This pump doesn't sound anywhere near as crazy as my pump. So that's the pressure with the, oh wow, that feels great. Yeah, I mean, I don't even notice a difference really. Now, I just can't believe how quiet this is. Here's this one. So here's what my water tank sounds like. By the way, you guys haven't been in here in a little while. It's looking really lovely. This has seriously been an incredible home for us. No regrets at all. Love what we've been doing. Got the AC running back here. Oof. All right, let's turn this pump on. Maybe it's because it's floor mounted, but mine is just really a lot louder. So here we are, everything's all plumbed in and this is the most important part of this video, how all this works. If you do not need guidance on this and you're just here for entertainment, this is gonna be pretty boring. But if you wanna figure out how you can do what we did in your bus, pay attention, slow this down if you need to. I'm gonna try and go as fast as I can. All right, so obviously water leaves the faucet. There's two valves down there. We've got our water heater plumbed in with one valve so that we can turn it off and remove it if necessary. Later, of course, is going to be shower fixture. And over here is where the magic happens. So all this is kind of built off of this valve. This is called an L-port valve, and I will link to it below. And essentially, it will let the water go in this L right here or down this straight line. It's a little confusing, but the water can tee off that way or it can go straight. It can't do both at the same time. It's one or the other. That's how we've created a tank fill and a city fill. From here, when you turn it in this direction, the water flows down here and goes into the tank and it builds up water pressure and it flows in. And obviously the pressure has to escape, which is why we have two vent hoses. This is a vent, this is a vent. It lets the air out. It has to do that because otherwise pressure in here would build up so much and this thing would explode. This right here is a check valve. We don't want this to backflow up through here. So there's a check valve, which means the water can only go in this direction. Over here, we have a regular valve. This is to turn off or on the pump. The only reason to turn this off is if you need to work on anything south of it. So if you need to remove the, replace the pump, you can turn the water off here. That's really the only function of this. So when the pump is running, we're drawing water from the tank. It's drawing it from down there, it goes up through here. It gets pulled through here. It goes through a water pump, 12 volt water pump. It goes through a strainer, so you don't send whatever kind of junk is in the tank into this. It goes through this accumulator tank, which is to reduce the amount of cycling that the pump does. And then it goes through this check valve right here. We don't want this water that comes in through the city to be able to backflow this way. So when this water from the city line comes this way, it hits here and it stops. Okay, has to go this way. Same is true for this. We do not want the pump to be able to send water up here and then out there. So there's a check valve right here. Water can only go this way. These three check valves and this L port is what makes this special. We can have city water pressure and we can also spill the tank with one port out there. All right, before we sign off on this filming video, there's a couple updates I have to show you. Sam did this work while I had a day off, so I wasn't here to film it. We've made a couple minor changes. The catalyst for this was the tank bellowing out. We were not comfortable with the tank doing that. And so we have created some structure so that it hopefully won't do that. So we've got this piece of plywood here. We've got that beam right there, which 
ties into this cross member, which is attached to the engine bay and the wall here. All this is probably not going to move laterally. And then the only change we made to the plumbing is we routed this to go up here and across so that it would be hidden and so we could put that piece of plywood in. So guys, if you got some value from this video, please, please, please hit that like button. Helps boost this video and get it out to other people like yourselves who might need help with this. Hit that subscribe button if you want to see more and check out my website, schoolbustinyhouse.com. There are several articles on there with advice about how to turn your bus into a tiny home. All right, thanks. Love you guys. Peace.